by now, everybody knows what's going on in Minnesota right now. You have the city on the city of Minneapolis ablaze. You have protests erupting all over the country. Violence is spiking. Looting is, is happening. And the people are fed up. 400 years of abuse, of torment, neglect, systemic rigging against them of the African American community. At least over 40 years of systemic rigging against the people, all of the people, by the wealthy elites. And now it's come to this. How long did they think this could go on without retaliation? How long did they expect the people who were being ignored, neglected, abused, tormented, to just sit back and take it? How long did they expect them to listen to this rhetoric of, you know, the people are meant to serve the system, and it's our system, so shut up and get in line and do as you're told. You're just part of a, of a bigger machine that doesn't care about you because your life isn't important. How much longer did you think that was going to happen? <sighs> History has shown time and again that every time the masses are ignored, eventually they've had enough and they rise up. You got the Scots against the English. You had the French Revolution, the Bolshevik Revolution. You had the fall of the Weimar Republic. I mean, there are, there are countless examples here. To go back even further, Rome. Rome was once a republic. And it became too big for its britches because of its military might. And they became an empire. And eventually it fell apart from within and was sacked from the outside as well. How much longer do you think this is going to go on? We have been an empire for quite some time. And the people, by and large, are tired of the empire. They just want to be an independent nation, the United States of America, and we, need, and we just want to mind our own business. We want, to, we want to let other countries do their own thing. And yes, we can offer moral support to the people that we agree with and condemn the people we disagree with, but that's as far as it can really go, legally. Everything we have done post-World War II, as far as military intervention, even our intelligence community engaging in all the sabotage and espionage and intelligence gathering and everything like that, it's all illegal. It's all illegal because Congress never officially declared war. Only when Congress officially declares war is it legal. And that hasn't happened since World War II. So you can't sit there, nobody can sit there and tell me, nor anybody else, that what we're doing is just and righteous and altruistic and the right thing and justice. It's not true. Everything that's going on is it's in the name of the imperial state. It's in the name of protecting the capitalists at the top of the entire system. I have a feeling that what's going on in Minneapolis is really just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, we got protests, again, we got protests all over the country. And the murder of George Floyd was, the, in my mind, the straw that broke the camel's back. They just couldn't take it anymore. And now the car, that cop, um, Derek Chauvin, Chauvin, I don't know how you pronounce his name, but he's being charged with third-degree murder. Third-degree murder. Now, okay, maybe I'm playing devil's advocate when I say this part here, but perhaps they're going to a degree where they might be able to get him on something, because if you went with first-degree murder, you'd have to prove intent, and it is extremely difficult to prove intent. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your capacity is. But, you know, especially cops, it's incredibly hard to prove that their intent was malicious. And not to mention racially motivated, although you could probably dig into Derek's history and find something there. But, um, 
Yeah, I mean, this just him being arrested and him with a third-degree murder charge, this is just the establishment throwing the people a bone and saying, yeah, 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 we hear you people. Here, we did a little something. Now shut up and leave us alone so we can go back to normal. That's what this is. And I think the people know it. I think they're not going to settle this time. The question is, how far will this go? How far can it go? before this erupts into an all-out revolution or an all-out civil war, whatever the case is. I guess it depends on who you ask. But um, the other part to this is these far alt-right extremist groups, you know which ones I mean, right? The camo-wearing, Grizzly Adams beard-wearing, AR-15-toting, Confederate flag-waving, yeehaws and rednecks. I mean, they are itching for the chance to shoot people they disagree with or who don't look like them. You know? They want to kill some libs. They want to They want to engage in a racial purge. They're already trying to do that at the southern border. They've been doing it for the last few years now under Trump and more actually even under Obama. Even under Obama, yeah. This whole thing at the border didn't start with Obama. It start, uh, sorry, it didn't start with Trump. It started really under Bush when you, when you go all the way back. It really started under Bush after 9-11. But what's resulting now is just the... Is just, it's the culmination of decades for some, centuries for others, of neglect, being ignored, being abused, being tormented, being tortured, being systemically oppressed. It can't continue, guys. This just can't continue. You know, it's up to us how we pick up the pieces because things are falling apart at the seams right now. And... I try to be nonviolent, you know, I try to encourage nonviolent resistance, but honestly, after all this time, after trying to maintain the moral high ground, how much more could they take? Over the years, the, the establishment has looked at passive nonviolent resistance as a green light to continue abusing these people. They're saying, yeah, we're going to push you, you're not going to push back, okay, we're going to punch you now, okay, you're not going to punch back, great, we're going to slam you to the ground, okay, you're not going to fight me off. Okay, great. I'm going to put my knee to your neck and kill you now. Every time that they that we are passive, or not myself personally, but when I say we, I mean the, the people, the poor people, working people, even the minority communities. Every time they are targeted like this, the nonviolent resistance is seen as, you know, a go-ahead. To say, yeah, go ahead and abuse these people all we want. They're not going to do anything. We'll get away with it. And I think... Again, I think the people across the country are realizing this. How much longer? How much longer? And, you know, when you see what the police did, especially with those journalists in Minneapolis, when um, that one guy, Omar, I forget his last name for some reason, but, you know, he, he was arrested after identifying himself to the, to the police as being CNN, as being with the media. And somebody else, one of their crew members, I, I couldn't tell whether he was Asian or something like that, but he didn't look like a white guy, so they arrested him. And finally they said, oh yeah, we released them because they showed us that they were CNN, it was proven they were the media. They showed you the damn credentials live on TV, and you arrested them anyway. Don't give me that crap, don't try to hide it, you exposed yourselves live on TV, you're not going to get away with it this time. Because and, and they aren't, really, the public is burying them right now as well they should. And now Trump is threatening to send in the send in the mercenaries. More specifically, though, the, the National Guard. But I have a question for the, for any military member, any National Guard person out there who might be sent to Minneapolis or wherever the violence and the looting starts getting out of hand. Who's the real traitor in this instance? Who's the real problem? Is it the people who are who are stooping to this violence to make themselves heard, or is it the people and the system? who are sending you to, ki to kill these people who have been neglecting them for so long, who have been rigging the system against them, who have been robbing them blind at every turn. Who's the real villain here? So before you get dispatched, you know, ask yourself that question. Who are you really going to serve? Are you going to serve the rich and powerful who are just going to use you to squash the poor and the working people at every turn? Or are you going to serve the people who you come from. You are part of us. Your oath is to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, not the leaders of the country. 
This is not a dictatorship as much as Trump might want it to be. It is not. And as long as we the people have the real power, it never will be. And it's going to be up to you to determine exactly how you use the power entrusted to you. Do you obey these immoral, unethical, and outright treasonous orders? Or do you turn against the people giving you the orders and protect the people? It's going to be your choice when this happens. And this also flushes out something that I've been saying for a while, is that you know when you look at the what this is culminating in, what, what's all led to this, freedom is a paradox. Okay, let me repeat that. Freedom is a paradox. When you talk about economy, when you talk about any kind of economic system, you cannot have freedom for the rich and freedom for the people at the same time. It never works out. It always ends up with one group or the other dominating the other. You can only have freedom for the people or freedom for the rich. You can't have it both ways. We have seen both ways in action, really. What happens when you have freedom for the rich? It always ends in a form of subservience, in a form of oppression. In the most extreme cases, it was slavery. You know, and after that, it was serfdom in the feudal era. And now it's capitalism with the employer-employee dynamic. But what happens when you have a democratized society down to its very core? Okay, and I'm talking about democratization of the workplace as well. Well then, the people have the real power. Everybody's voice is heard. And even if sometimes things may not turn out the way we want, some of us, at least our voices were heard and we know they were heard. And we can honor and respect the results more for that. But when we're left out, when, when we're totally uh, supplanted and deliberately shafted by the establishment like this, we feel like we have nothing. We feel like it's their world and we're just living in it. And that's what they want us to think. But guess what, guys? The Constitution is very clear on this. It's our country. Our country. If we want to go a certain direction, who the hell are they to tell us we can't do it? If we want to go in a more socialist direction, who the fuck are they to tell us that we can't do that? Hmm? We elected them to represent us. We don't exist to vote for them and make sure they stay in their positions of power. We're not their bitches. We're not their little tools. We're not their little concubines. We're not their little eunuchs who are just there to do their bidding. They are elected to serve us. And they seem to have forgotten about that in their quest for greater wealth and power. Well, that's what's happening in Minneapolis and all over the country right now. People have had enough. They're rising up. They're letting the establishment know, you can't do this to us anymore. We don't want this anymore. But I will finish off with this. Don't fall for the tricks. They're going to try and throw you bones. They're going to try to say, oh, yeah, we're going to do this for you. And then, they're going to, and then when your guard's down, they're going to turn around and just go right back to business as usual. Maybe worse. Don't fall for the tricks. Be smart about it. Organize. Strategize. You know, come up with plans. Roll them out. You know, get, let's get involved, people. Let's take our country back. We've got no choice. If we don't stand up and put up a reasonable fight, it will just continue. I'm not saying get violent, okay? But if you have to defend yourself, by all means, defend yourself, yes. Be ready to defend yourself if they come at you with their mercenaries. But let's try to steer this country on the ground in the right direction. And I remember I did that Communicare bit uh, not too long ago. I also did the um, Green New Deal one and the Medicare for All one and came up with some ideas. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Organize at your grassroots. Do what you got to. Offer up your expertise. Bring your skills to the table. Let's move us in the right direction. Let's take our country back and let it be known that we stand for freedom for the people. We stand for a free society, not a free oligarchy. We believe that the more wealth and power you have in society, the more you are accountable to those around you, just like the politicians. So let's make it happen, guys. we got a lot of work to do. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's probably going to be a lot more to come. I shudder to think how ugly it's going to get, but we need to be ready for it. And we need to be try our best to weather this storm and move in a positive direction.